last night at dinner, I was telling some uh, friends who were staying with here uh, what I would ask if I got up here. And uh, my wife overhears the conversation, and, and she says, and, and I'm like, I'm, it, would, it would be so joyous to be up here and asking these questions. And she said, you're not going to go up there. There's people that have been pre-paving this and doing the work of getting up here, imagining this in their head. And I'm like, and as soon as she said it, we like, we, we made eye contact. And she knew that she was saying that work was going to trump joy. And we both knew I was going to be up here. So I did it. I did it again. I manifested something good. So anyway. That was powerful pre-paving. When you pre-pave in alignment with who you are, look how fast it comes about. Amen to that. Yeah. So uh, I don't know if this is going to be the finale, but um, regardless, likely, likely. So uh, I just want to say a, a prayer, like, let me ask questions that touch everyone in this room Yeah. that creates a jumping off point. So the next time you're in Asheville, instead of saying, you silly humans, you're still not getting it. Let oh, we us would all never say, say that. Oh my gosh. What a great jumping off point. You guys have really come a long way. You're finally getting this. What we want to say is you will never stop being at a jumping off place. And that's the way you like it. All right. Okay. We're never going to be to the final place. We want to hear your questions. You give us a question. We'll give you an answer. Let's see how many questions and answers we can do in 11 minutes. Cool. Let's do it. Okay. So, um, I, it was once described to me that along this path, we are not doing, um, we're we're just living like normal humans and then we learn about the law of attraction and as we learn about the law of attraction and we would say instead of that that during all of that time that you're living life you're learning about law of attraction and so your life experience is teaching you about it and then when someone points it out in a very concise way you feel the resonance of what you've already taught yourself and then you go through a portal where things shift it's like moving into the next vehicle yeah Get it. yeah yeah Okay, so as we get really good at it and our belief in the law of attraction turns into knowing. And how do you feel while that's happening? How do you feel as you're getting really good at it? Uh, good. Yeah, you feel good. Are you basing it on how you feel or the results you're getting or both? Both. Excellent. What now? Okay, so we are learning this and we're getting good at it. Um, and at, we see that the totality of all of everybody and everything and how it's feeding in and how we're kind of it, it creates that oneness feeling and thank you everyone for all of it you want yes. to feel you feel yeah yeah thank you so um but it was described to me one time that once you get really good at that and your ego dissolves and oh your ego doesn't dissolve because your ego is how you focus okay. but that negative ego that is in competition ceases to exist while your super ego which we would call your inner being is dominant super sense of self call it anything you want ego is a pretty good word okay ego has negative connotations because most people approach life from a sort of combative point of view yes we interrupted you but we just wanted to make that clarification so where were you going okay so where I'm going is uh, we're asking and we're receiving and we're listening to this inner voice and it was described to me that at some point you'll stop asking for yourself and you'll start asking how can I serve God and that's never really uh, sat well with me because I feel like this asking like why would I why would Abraham teach me to listen to myself all the time and then all of a sudden I get really good at it and now I have to listen to this God thing that's outside of me isn't that God thing the thing that's been talking to me the whole time so there's never ever a sense that I have to do the work for God all as long as I'm listening then I'm doing that and right? in the moment you try to do that you separate yourself from the very thing you've been trying to find all along that's why We've been teasing you a little bit, saying that humans have servitude-itis, <laughs> servitude-itis. And by that, what we mean is you sort of are missing the point. You are God. You are. I love it. You are. I love it. Cool. And someone who was a very good ambassador from your point of view of God, which is Jesus, understood that if you sat before him dripping your illness, he didn't see your illness. Instead, he knew your wellness. He saw you in your God form, not in your human form where you were slightly disconnected from it. And so when you're tuned into that, that is when you do your greatest service. We're not trying to talk you out of service. It feels wonderful to be of value to others. We just want you to plug your vacuum in before you try to vacuum the floor. If you're not plugged in to the source energy, then you have nothing to give. So you can't serve without knowing who you are. My next question is about time. 
I feel like you have never negated the fact that we're experiencing time in a linear way. Oh, you are in a time space reality because it helps you to focus. And most important, because in your awareness of your time and space, you can feel the satisfaction of your motion forward. Without that perspective, it would not be as rich. Okay, so those things happen and I can change my perception of it. So something may happen instead of getting preoccupied with this thing in the past I shoot off my rocket of desire and my experience of that thing in the past can change it does. right right so that's what I've because wherever you're looking your perception is dominant and so if you are in alignment and you are looking into a past experience your perception sees it through the lens of source we've teased with you a little bit and said and so in your connected now you change your past today we've taken an even more evolved for your advantage stance in that we say to you the difference between humans and their inner being is that your inner being doesn't look back your inner being is always looking forward but humans who can't help but look back we're just asking you since you're gonna look back you're probably gonna look back look back from your now perspective of connection don't look back from your place of not liking where you are and trying to justify or explain why you got in this place you don't want to be that's not productive at all that holds you where you don't want to be okay so I was told a story about time and I'm trying to figure out if this works in the way that it was described okay so real quickly the story is somebody was skiing down a hill and some mountain and they were by themselves and they're off on their own they shouldn't have been there alone they hurt their leg and they're sitting there and they're like oh my god I'm so I'm, I'm in so much pain I'm not gonna be able to get down the mountain I'm gonna die up here or something so they look over across the way and 100 yards away there's like this little shed so they crawl over there and they get into the shed and they're sitting in the shed and they're, they're praying like God let me out of this situation like give me help whatever he opens his eyes and he sees this box right and in this box is like some sort of prosthetic limb or some something some contraption that gets him down the mountain and it's in the paper the next day or something and some guy comes forward and he says I was the guy that a year ago was tasked with cleaning out that shed and I picked up that box that was the last thing I had to pull out and I got this overwhelming feeling don't take the box and so I put the box down and here it came around and it saved this guy's life or something so my question is if we are in this time space reality can I pray now for something to change for my experience of something to change this rocket of desire yes. and have an effect on someone in the past yes let us explain it to you in a easier way to get your thoughts around so if you start with the premise that every thought that's ever been thought still exists and you realize that even before you got here into this body you were launching rockets of desires in other words you were prepaving even before you got here and knowing about your well-being what this conversation is taking us to is a conversation that we had earlier about the immense number of intentions and beliefs and desires that this atmosphere is rich with it's what we mean when we say to Esther it's child's play in other words that story that you described is child's play in relationship to the things that are possible because in your desire for well-being you've put things into the vortex that are underway and their ability to be translated into realness is only about your ability to perceive them because you're slow at doing that you have a distorted view of reality you think things have to go really really slow because as a human race things have been going really really slow for one reason and one reason only you are enamored with what is so you give most of your attention to what is so what is just keeps being what is different faces different places but same experiences over and over and over again when you catch a whiff of the universe's ability to take your thoughts your thoughts can instantaneously be transformed into things it isn't only that someone from the past put it there and you got a thought and another thought and another thought that led you there there's a lot of that that goes on it is that things can shift in the moment based upon your ability to believe what you are desiring one day Jerry and asked, someone handed them a book and the book was written by someone who was talking about abundance and there was an analogy given that once you really get into the vibe of abundance that it'll start demonstrating to you in lots of ways and so in this description pennies would start showing up everywhere and Jerry and Esther read it and they were not resistant to the idea of it but it didn't feel very important to them they felt in a sort of 
snobbery sort of way that they were way past that way of understanding creation they weren't looking to create pennies but the story captivated their interest just the same and then the number of pennies that started showing up in their experience became ridiculous it was like a raining of pennies around them they were finding 20 and 30 pennies a day in places where they shouldn't have been where they'd never been before Esther was actually thinking for a while that Jerry was playing tricks on her and he was thinking the same of her in other words so many weird things with the pennies because that activated in their vibration and the universe was demonstrating that anything that's active in your vibration can come into your reality if you are amenable to allowing it to be well they're amenable to allowing the universe to create in their experience in any way that they are giving their thoughts provided it's something wanted and so they were wide open vessels for the universe to play with joyfully in that way so this went on for several days and they're getting on an airplane and they got onto the airplane and they're sitting in the bulkhead they're buckled in everything that they own is up overhead because they are on the bulkhead and they're sitting there and as the plane is lifting into the air Esther looked down and she said to Jerry you've got to see this two pennies were standing on their edges <laughs> nothing happens outside the physics characteristics of where you are because there are laws that rule all things but there are possibilities within those laws that humans do not allow so the inertia of the plane the vibration of the plane in that moment the weight of the pennies in that moment and the intentionality of Jerry and Esther to see remarkable things with pennies they were no longer blah 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 ho hum ho hum about pennies <laughs> these pennies had demonstrated something that they thought to be before then an impossible feat Esther said I'm so glad we were together because no one would have believed me and Jerry said no one but me will ever believe you anyway and Esther said well it's enough that you were here all things are possible if this time space reality has the wherewithal to inspire within you a desire if the desire can be born out of this then the full manifestation of the desire can be born out of this also if you can dream it it has to be a reality so you've brought us around to our favorite subject which is the reason that you all are in your physical bodies anyway and that's the turning thoughts to things it's the comprehending the vibrational nature of this universe and molding or modifying my thinking to a place of expectation so that I can allow the thoughts of my desires to become bigger more momentum more pleasing more momentum bigger more momentum more pleasing more momentum until those vibrations become thoughts and those thoughts become impulses and those impulses become rendezvous with pennies or whatever and those rendezvous support more knowing and that more knowing supports more asking and that asking brings more answering and that answering brings more reveling until finally you are in your physical bodies being who you were born to be the creator of your reality not sticking your nose in anyone else's but letting life come to you and letting those decisions be born in you and honing your egotistical point of self into a place where you allow the fullness of who you are to demonstrate in this time and space things that have never been demonstrated in this time and space before and don't you know that that's happening all day every day we want you to focus not upon the creations we want you to focus upon the creatine we want you to focus not upon where you're going we want you to focus upon how fun it is on your way along that journey we want you to feel the vibrational essence of your unfolding not jump so far into the need for the manifestation that you miss the parts that are just as delicious the parts that are delicious the vibration is delicious if you can sense it the impulse is delicious if you can feel it the idea is wonderful if you can comprehend it and acknowledge it the words are special but so much came before those words could be offered you see you think that you didn't prepave to be here but oh the life that you've been living and what you put in all of our vortex there was no possible way that we were not going to have this conversation given who you are and what you want and it was bigger and further and more and more satisfying than any conversation that we've ever had this was new unto the universe and we are appreciated
We've enjoyed this interaction. Yeah.